So today we're going to be installing a Xeno GameCube chip on a GameCube. Now I do it a little bit differently and the way that everybody else I know does it, does it this way. Where the way that the Xeno chip is designed is it's supposed to be a quick solder board so you just lay it over the install points and then just drip a little bit of solder into it and then it's a wireless install. You see how all the points that needs to be connected to correlates with the points on the Xeno chip. So that's, that's how it's normally installed. However, I don't do that. I use the alternate install points on the other side and that's what this install is going to be. If you've seen any of my work on Instagram, you'll actually have seen this exact mod and this is how that I do GameCubes. So the Xeno chip is a region free chip for the GameCube, uh, similar to the PS2 chips that I always install and always do, very similar. So here's the actual alternate install points. Typically you use these when you botch the initial install, uh, so it's kind of like your second chance on the, on the GameCube and on the install. However, I don't even do it the other way. Why? Because this way is more fun for me. Like this is what I enjoy more. And it's funny, like uh, on Facebook, there's a there's a very long, like never ending joke about which way is better. It's this endless debate about wired versus wireless. And it's, it's always funny. Neither way is right, neither way is wrong. It's your preference, I feel. So I'm doing the wired install. So here we have the first, uh, first wire I put on and uh, I didn't like the way I connected it so using the liquid flux so I put some jelly flux on there because that's what I like and we're going again. Now you see how I'm counting the pins? Actually what ended up happening was I ended up installing uh, this wire under the wrong pin but whatever I'll tell you about that later because right now we're going to talk about bridging. So you see how I bridged it? I bridged it. It was an accident, didn't mean to. So now I'm going to be removing the bridge and typically uh, just wiping it away with your iron can work. Just like spreading it elsewhere or just kind of dragging it off. That's usually how I get rid of a bridge. You can also use um, solder braid by placing the braid over the bridge and then the, the solder braid itself will suck up the, the solder and you can remove a bridge that way. Or you can do what I just did and just wipe it away with your iron. There's multiple different ways to get rid of a bridge. But when you're working on a uh, 0.5 millimeter fine pitch with 38WG Kynar like this right here, you know, it's a bridging is a very common occurrence. That's why I wanted the I wanted to put like my my mistakes in the video so you can see the mistakes that I make and see how I kind of get rid of them. So right there, that's also another bridge. It took me, this was the first wire, what's funny is that I bridged this first wire multiple times and then never bridged it again. I don't know, must be a, must have been my first mod that day or something like that. So here I am, same thing, got rid of the bridge again, third time, third time's a charm. Now, typically with these small 38WG Kynar wires, I don't usually use, sometimes I use tweezers, sometimes I don't. It all depends on the situation. But for soldering to all of these pins, which I will do for the next four wires, I uh, do not, I do not use the tweezers. I don't know, I just feel you have a little bit more control by holding it with your actual fingers. Uh, my apologies for my fingers covering up the entirety of the camera. You can still see me soldering to it. If you want to see more close-up soldering, you can watch any one of the numerous PS2 videos that I made uh, because this is very similar. This is literally me using what I like, how I do PS2 mods, but just on a GameCube. So now we have our first four wires, and here's the funny thing I wanted to say, or well, I'll say in a second. You see how I'm holding, I'm pulling up each wire to support the weight of the board? That's how you know if you get a correct solder joint. So the four wires that I actually soldered to the pins, all of those needed to be moved one over to the right. So those are the incorrect wires. So this whole entire mod was incorrect, and then after, after I did the entire thing, I had to go back and then move all of those wires uh, that are soldered to the IC right there. I had to move them all one pin over. But I didn't film that because this footage was actually like pretty, pretty good. So I just kept it and I figured I'd just tell you guys exactly that. So moral of that story, double check your install diagrams and double check your solder points. Very important. 
So here what I did was I cut a very, 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 very short wire because the chip, I put it as close to the, to the legs of the IC as possible. So this is the shortest wire I could possibly make. I'm using the burning the insulation method, which I've talked about in previous PS2 videos, how it's not good and you shouldn't do it, but uh, for certain situations, just do it. Like, you know what I mean? We're hobbyists. This isn't like, we're not building rocket ships. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. But, uh, so here is soldering to the Xeno chip itself, the first one. Now I'm gonna route those other three wires around in like an intricate pattern. Like I said, if you you know, follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this exact mod done before, which is a reason why you should follow me on social media. You get to see cool stuff, and you get to see the actual pictures, and they're cool. I don't know, I think they're cool. So just like the PS2 mods, solder it to the board always first, and then you bring it to the point that you're gonna be soldering it to. Tin the point, tin the wire, and then cut the wire to length. Like the when I first, my first couple mods, uh, like I ever did, like with like a chip, I always soldered it to the chip first, the wires. And I never really realized how much harder doing it that way made it for me. It didn't make it harder, but it made it like, like less good. I don't know. <laughs> like took a little bit longer was a little bit more tedious and it just flows so much better when you solder to the board and then wire it to the chip obviously depending on the mod those details may change so here we go I went off camera a little bit but now I have um, the four wires going straight and now I'm just you know using my tweezers to try to like bend them and get them into some sort of nice configuration we're gonna clean up all that nasty flux later so now that they're all nice in a nice little correlation I'm going to wrap them around and uh, the I'm gonna actually the second two wires or the the final two wires are actually gonna go around so that way no wires actually go over one another you know what I mean there's no crossing of wires there isn't one going over another which I have done before in the past but I try to steer away from it so now that they're all flattened together and it just loops around so it's a it's a quick little it's a quick little really really fun install this is great great I don't want to say it's great practice for doing ps2s in this style um, because this is very reminiscent of the style of the ps2 mods that I do so I don't want to say this is good practice for that because uh, to me the only reason why I was able to do this was because of those ps2s and I just think this is a really cool one to see because it's like a mini it's like a little mini ps2 um, Interesting fact about the Xeno chip, it also forces, uh, it's a region free chip, so if you have a PAL GameCube at, that plays in 50 hertz, this will force it, you can force it to play, um, pretty much you can play a PAL GameCube in, on an American television with this, with this chip, and it works. I don't know if you couldn't before, I don't know too much about PAL GameCubes, all I know is I did one on a PAL GameCube uh, in, in order to get it work here in America, you had to Xeno it and it worked and it was pretty sweet. So now we got the final two. So those four are like the data lines and then the final two points is uh, power and ground. So right here, uh, I don't think on the install diagram there was actually a point for this. You just had to go to any ground and I chose, um, or this is power. And I chose this right here for, um, the positive lead of the capacitor and I think on the other one I checked continuity with another capacitor and grounded it to another capacitor and that's how that worked actually I can't remember but yeah that's what I did hold on I'm about to go look at the installed diagram right now just to see what I did this is me looking at the installed diagram what is yeah, yep, that's power, that's power, uh, and that one's ground. And that's what I must have done, is I must have checked continuity between the ground points on the actual, um, on the actual board to find out that that capacitor was ground, because I don't think it tells you, it doesn't tell you that that capacitor is ground on the install diagram. Okay, all right, correct. 
For power and ground, you just multimeter it and check it out. Pretty easy to do uh, when looking for power and ground. I did a video about using a multimeter uh, and how to do things like that with the multimeter. So here we go. Boom. That's it. That's the finished product. And here I am going and cleaning it up. And thank you guys very, very much for watching. Oh, and bonus, when you do this, you always got to check, uh, you always got to do the potentiometer and make sure the potentiometer is properly tweaked so it can play the burn games because this also plays burn games. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Thank you for checking out all my other videos. Thank you for all the endless amounts of support that you guys give me. I greatly appreciate all of it, and I'm going to be more frequent with videos. See you guys next time.